Monday internet. Um, today I'm going to talk about a uh, film that I saw last Friday. It's called Nomads of the Rainforest. I'm not going to really do a film review in the traditional sense of, you know, you critique how the actors work and how the cinematography was because it wasn't actors, it was a documentary. And um, cinematography was terrible because it was from 1983 and the film that I got to see was online, like streamed from the library at UNT. And it definitely used to be a VHS because it had the little magnetic, like, fail strips constantly happen. Yeah, it sucked. From the time when people, I guess, rewound a lot to see monkeys grooming each other. It's called Nomads of the Rainforest. It's from 1983. Um, I don't remember the name of the anthropologist who did it, but I can link you to some information below. The film is about the uh, Wow Nari Indians. I'm probably saying it wrong. I'm just gonna call them the W Indians from now on because um, I'll say it wrong every time. They're located in Ecuador along the uh, Amazon River. There used to be lots and lots and lots of them, but now there's only like one or two tribes of them left. They are a nomadic tribe. Um, they move whenever whatever soil that they're using like gets used up, basically. Like they garden and then whenever it's dead they move on. They have been relatively untouched by society. Uh, up until very recently they hadn't been researched like at all. Uh, nobody knew that they existed until these missionaries went down and like tried to go see them, but they disappeared and the only thing that's left of them is a camera, or that was like of those people was a camera that has pictures of the Wanderer Ind Indians, and we're um, not really sure what happened to them, but they probably got killed, and they most likely got cannibalized, and I kind of think that's funny, but it's not, because cannibalism is bad. But still, it's what they get. Anyway, um... <laughs> guy, this white dude, um, is the only one that's like gotten any real um, information on them as a people in general. Um, the film explores everything from language to uh, gender differences to family relationships to how the village works together as a village and how they just like live. Um, they're considered an ideal type tribe um, because they are very kinship based. There is no real chiefdom or ruler of any sort. Um, they, uh, uh, the concept of change is accepted in a non-linear way. It's either it always was this way or it never was this way. So the introduction of the steel axe was not like something that was really strange and different and weird to them. They were like, yeah, we use steel axes. Why do you use them? Because we use them. How long have they been around? I don't know, but we use them. Like, that's pretty much how a conversation would go if you asked them. And they also have, like, no real want to expand beyond whatever world they have. The, wor the world that they inhabit, that they live in, is the only world to them. There is nothing outside of it. And they don't have any want to, like, go out and explore. Like, this is okay. They're chill with it. They're also considered a Stone Age tribe because they use stone tools and not steel tools. And for some reason they have a steel axe. And that really does never get addressed. We don't know how the heck they got it. But they have it, and it's like the only steel item they have. And they have a knife, too. That was it. I don't know how they got them. Maybe the, the dude gave it to them. I don't know. They used to be really, really, really violent, um, killing their neighbors and, obviously, those missionaries, but they, for some reason, don't feel the threatened by the anthropologist that's doing this particular study. Um, and it's not because he, like, looks like them. I mean, he wears clothing and they don't, and he's definitely, like, an Anglo dude, and, like, they're not obviously. So, we don't know. It's kind of theorized that because there aren't as many of the of that particular type of Indian around, they like haven't had the need to be violent lately, so now they're just sort of like, let's survive and yay, survival. There is no formal education. Everything is informal and learned as they go along. Um, one cool thing that comes from stuff like that is the stuff that they learn is things that they need to know, not unnecessary things. So, like, an average Wanari Indian child can probably diff tell you what kind of monkey was around this particular tree based off of its urine smell, but they can't tell you what 2 plus 2 is because why do they need to know that? It's not a thing that they need to know. They don't know who Einstein is, they don't care. Everything is equal though, even between adults and children. Like, because you're an older person doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a lot of extra attention, and just because you're a child does not mean that you're going to be coddled. The children are treated like tiny adults. Um, but the cool thing is, is they're encouraged through everything that they do, like a lot more than adults would be, and that's about the only coddling they get. 
Uh, for example, in the film, these two kids go out and they're like hunting, and then they get this teeny tiny bird, and they bring it back for the for the family to eat. And the grandmother was like, "Oh, good job! You brought us a bird." Meanwhile, like their father brought home some sixty pounds of meat. Um, another cool thing about this particular tribe is everything is very very. Um, Share all the things! Always share! Share everything! Yay! Um, anytime meat is brought back to the village, it's shared with the entire village. Anytime fruit is brought back, it's shared with the entire village. The entire garden is shared with the entire village. Um, the only thing that's different is that um, vegetables that are picked from the garden will be prepared individually, while meat will be prepared, meat and fruit will be prepared like as a group and spread out equally amongst all of the families. One thing that I thought was really cool is that their language doesn't have the word for work in it. They have action words like if a guy is out and he's working trying to fell a tree they say that he's chop 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 chopping. That's what he's doing. He's chopping. That's all he's doing. He's not working. He's chopping. They have a really really like proactive and positive view on life and I actually kind of think that that might be one of the reasons why is because they don't have a word that has such a negative connotation for things that they have to do. There's not a word for chore. There's not a word for work. There's not a word for job. It's just what they do and that's really cool. Overall, I would give this film a 6 out of 10 because the cinematography is terrible because it's from the 80s and the music is also really terrible because it's got that weird synthesizing crap, but it's really interesting and if you have it in your school's library, then like you should totally watch it. Um, if you go to UNT, here's a link for it so you can watch it. Um, otherwise, I will see you all on Friday.